it was cold, and I was in Denmark, Copenhagen, and I was lost, completely lost. Lost with myself, lost in my career, and lost mostly with my own definition. I didn't know who I was anymore. And here I was, far away from everything that I know, trying to figure out who I am, or rather, who do I want to be? You see, I studied architecture for eight years, not because I wanted to, but because my parents thought that the safest plan for me was to draw plans for the rest of my life for other people as an architect. <laughs> but in their defense, I was like, I was one of those kids that um, when they asked me, so, son, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was like, hmm, I want to be like Michael Jackson, James Brown. And my dad was like, mm, uh, we need to talk. We need to talk, sit down. I'll give you two options, easy. Option one, I help you. I help you get an education in architecture, in the finest school in America, et cetera, et cetera. And option two, I help you not. <laughs> no need to tell you which option I choose. But then again, fast forward, 10 years later, here I am in Copenhagen asking myself the same question. What do I want to do when I grow up? Wait a minute, there's a lot of facial hair on my face. Like, uh, I'm no Peter Pan. What do I want to do now? And I think we all ask ourselves that question at some point in time in our life. Luckily, there was this man. His name is Hayden. Hayden Knox, from New York, 75 years old. He was living in my building, and he tells me, I mean, I didn't know him. I would just like, run into him in the building, say hi, he was always nice, smiling at all. And one day, I bump into him in the staircase, and he tells me, Alun, you're an architect. Maybe a lawyer, but I think you're an architect. But it was not your choice. It was your father's choice. But you know what? The good news is, and the bad news is, you're an artist deep down. And you will not be able to get away from it. I looked at him, and I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> and he looked at me straight in the eyes, and he said, because that's the story of my life. At this very moment, that man, Hayden, planted the seed of confidence and evidence that I should just do what I wanted to do in my life. And I started immediately. I took a portrait of him. But I didn't stop there. I went full force into it. I started taking pictures of people like you, people on the street, like not necessarily people that I thought that were photogenic, but people that were charismatic, that had a story to tell. And I could read those stories on their faces. So I would like talk to strangers on the streets, in the subway. I got a lot of no's, a lot of, oh, creep. <laughs> but I got a few yes. And it, little by little, people started to like those photos. And people started contacting me. Oh, I want a portrait like that one that you did there. And next thing I know, I'm making a living out of this, actually a lot more than I was doing when I was an architect, strangely en enough. <laughs> but that might change, you know. They say architecture is the old man's profession, so I might switch my vinyls in, uh, in the long run. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so things are going great. People are calling me until this one day, my phone rings, and it's the UN. They're calling me, they're like, Mr. Allen B. I'm like, who, me? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, we want to work with you. We saw your work, and uh, we think it's great. Uh, we want to tell the stories of 10 women from Africa, from Senegal, which is my b birthplace, by the way. And uh, we think that your honest photography could, you're a great candidate to tell the stories of those women. 
So I went to Africa, to my uh, back home, and I worked, and I, uh, I had the chance to tell the stories of those amazing women who started from nothing and built, not kingdoms, but queendoms. They just made it. She was a maid. She was uh, earning less than $100 uh, a month, and she had a baby, and her husband was like, you're not gonna go to school. She left her husband, took her baby on her back, went to school, and today she has two master's degree and a company with 40 employees. So I had the chance to tell the stories of those women, because after that, that's the cherry on the cake. For my first exhibition to present this project, they took me to the World Expo, the Universal Expo of Milan, where I ex exhibited my work for the first time in front of millions, not thousands, but millions of people. And it was my first exhibition, and I was like, that is the sign, that's it. <laughs> this is good, okay, okay, it's on. And people started calling me. I, was, I had the chance to show this work, tell the stories of those women in many, many countries. I travel a lot. But one thing was still missing. I knew that I was doing what I loved, but I didn't know what it meant. It was only when I took that work that I shot in Senegal, and that I took it back to Senegal for the Biennale of Dakar, that it all made sense. I had an art opening there, I was very excited. It was important for me because they are the most concerned of the stories that I'm telling. And I wanted to see how they would react. And uh, so, good news, it's a, it's a full house, lots of people are here, everything's great, I'm happy. But then, somewhere in the middle there, a group of students just come. And uh, out of them, there was at least like 30 young women and they just go straight to my photos and they mesmerize by it and they just, they stay there and they're looking at it for like a good 10 minutes and I'm like, wow, what is this? And then the director of that school comes to me and tells me, we've been to a lot of exhibitions and it's the first time that I see them that focused. And it hit me, it hit me so hard. They sing little pieces of themselves in those photographs just like that man, Hayden, saw a piece of himself in me back in Denmark. See, we all mirror to uh, societies. We all like mirrors to, so to societies. And um, in the quest of finding ourselves, instead of telling the world with a lot of force and struggle, instead of telling the world who we are, maybe we should stop and listen because the world is already telling us who we are. Thank you.